Good morning, and welcome to episode 8A of Clang versus the Space Engineer. And I'm really excited for this episode because a lot of new things have happened in the, since the last update. As you can see in the sunrise, we have lens flare which is really totally cool. You can see the shadow of the sun again and again. Really nice sunrise. This game just gets better and better every every update and I'm so happy to see it. And there's a few other things too that I, I've noticed. Plus I've also updated my shadow play so hopefully that eliminates a lot more of the lag that has been experienced in the past. Now this is a two-part episode, so there's going to be A and then there's going to be B. That's what I have planned now. Maybe there will be a C. So we'll see if there's going to be A, B, or C on episode 8. But in episode A, which is where we're at right now, 8A, we have a task. Another beautiful sunny day. And you see that spaceship down there? in the middle of the lake you probably can't see it very well but I gotta go salvage it and since it's been a while and there's you know the, you know they say that there's an attack imminent there's a landing but I've been here for you know four days five days now eight days eight game days and they say there's an enemy landing detected I will show you see right over here enemy sight detected but even though the computer has said oh there's an enemy site over there I haven't been over that mountain to go see what it is that's over there and nothing has come over on this side of the mountain nothing has appeared so I've been busy working on a very special project and that project is forthcoming let me show let me show you Ooh, almost died man you know why I didn't have my inertia adapters on talk about hitting the right button at just the right time I thought I was gonna plunge to my death anyways there's still holes in my in my fortress still holding my wall I haven't fixed them yet and there's a reason for that you know I gotta get that material from out of the middle of the lake and try to start rebuilding on my spaceship but with what little material that I had here in the fort I was able to build this to help me go facilitate that uh, that particular project as you can see right here I got a, a couple of collectors that go straight to my nano factory and they were in the distance is my project as you can see it's a truck oh what a nice truck this is I hooked up a little Gatling turret up on the top to help protect me if I get bush, if I get bushwhacked, I got three cargo things hooked up to a uh, merge block right there. I reinforced the the frame with some some heavy steel, and it kind of looks like a Lamborghini from the front too. See, lots of lights. Now let me tell you something. This truck was built by a, a Russian of some sort you know because everything was in Russian in in the workshop now then in, in the workshop name they call it it's called SV comma truck now I know in space engineers there's a lot of things like oh you got your buildings and you got your spaceships and man everything's bristling with guns right oh look at this it's got so much guns look at the art design of this oh so awesome right but sometimes what you want and what you need 
is a truck. And anytime I go to looking for like a, a decent truck, there's only one place to shop, and that's Russian engineers. Because Russian engineers seem to know how to build a truck. I try American trucks, right? Oh, so many guns, so impractical. Look at all these fancy doodads that they do. Either they're that or they're a box with wheels. One of the two. You go to German trucks, and German trucks, you know, they're nice, but you drop a tiny rock on it and it falls apart. Very, very fragile. They engineer them, everything so, so light. Like their spaceships are so light. The Germans have a tendency to just make the lightest spaceships possible that, you know, perform great, man. I got to tell you, I love German spaceships. If you, if I was in a race and I hit in combat because, man, you take any sort of hit in a German spaceship and you're going to get, that ship's going to crack in half. I'm not talking like, you know, oh, a, a, a turret hit or a, maybe a missile hit. I'm talking like you get a boulder hit, like from a gravity gun or a missile hit. Those things just blow. Friendships, forget it. Forget it. You hit it once anywhere, the whole thing blows. That's the thing. And now, now, Russians can't build a spaceship for, 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 any, for any reason. I mean, they build spaceships, sure, and there's Russian spaceships, you know, and they're kind of like bricks. But let me tell you something. The one thing that a Ru that a Russian engineers know how to build is a truck, and this truck is fabulous. I mean, I modified it a lot, so I call it my, it's my truck, right? I mean, I put this whole back uh, cargo thing on there, you know, because I have a little pooper right there that'll take, dump all the stuff into the into the little thing there, the collectors. And it just looks cool, and it's a cool truck, and it's very sturdy, and it really works. So, I gotta tell you, I love Russian trucks. Now, I see that there's a problem here. I'm missing a wheel. I got to see what it is that I need. I need six steel plate, 15 construction, and two large tubes. So let's see if I can't just get those. I'm just gonna fly through the hole here in my in my in my fort to get to my cargo bay. Which, you know, I haven't fixed that yet, but it's been actually quite convenient for me when it came to building this truck that I uh, leave that there so as you can see I kind of flew through that hole quite a few times in my quest to um, build my truck so I'm just gonna see if I can't build this truck. Now our brave astronaut is feeling really proud of himself. You know, I mean, who wouldn't? You got yourself a brand new truck. From Russia with love. There we go. I gotta tell you something about space engineers and tires wheeled vehicles have only been possible on multiplayer servers for a very short while like maybe two months ago they kinda focused on it and let me tell you something it's been a godsend I even wrote on the forum, you know the, the the forums that they have about that help them develop the game and on Steam and I said you know wheels are garbage because I tried to build wheels on a multiplayer server, wheeled vehicles, because I love wheeled vehicles. I just love it. I mean, space and got wheeled vehicles. And, you know, who doesn't want a truck? I, I'm kind of a redneck, so I, I want a truck. A job, especially a job like this where I'm salvaging something and I'm getting bullets. But the way the wheels were before, man,
you couldn't you 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 couldn't drive 500 feet down the road and those wheels just disappear your whole rig would crash and what a waste of time and effort unless you are on creative and in single player yeah wheels were okay even then they were like eggs you know you went over a bump too hard or something and they broke but they've kind of really fixed it so now a lot of times I have like where they might desync like if I'm uh, using the Space Master or something and I'm jumping around from grid to grid setting things up doing whatever it is that I need to do but then all it is is a quick reset and everything gets right back together now the last time I known though okay I think there might have been a little lag there the last time I known though wheels uh driving on wheels is kinda laggy so there may be audio problems while I'm driving so I'm gonna try to keep my talking to a minimum as we drive towards the uh, spaceship now I like this fighter Well, it looks like I made it down the hill, all right. And from what I see in here, there seems to be a a tire might have rolled down the hill. Maybe that was the wheel or the tire that was from my uh, my truck earlier. You know, I was saying it was missing. It, clearly, it rolled down the hill. So I might as well just get my tire back. as we continue on down the road now I was quiet because you know the last time I realized that uh... come on where's the container the last time I drove a truck there, there's a little bit of lags and it causes audio problems so I don't want to drive I don't want to drive and really talk at the same time so what I'm so I'll try to stay as quiet as possible while I'm trying to drive to my destination
okay. As you can see, I think the developers have a little bit more work to do when it comes to wheeled vehicles. You know, as that's pretty rough. But it's getting the job done, which is a whole lot better than what it used to be. A whole lot better. And I love just driving around. Now, one of the things I noticed that when I was taking that trip is that I could use the stereo. A stereo system. I had a stereo system in my ship here. So I'm thinking I might just transfer my stereo over to uh, my truck. Because, you know, this truck is my, is my main vehicle now. As you can see, this uh, spaceship is kind of broken. It's got, well, for one thing, it ain't going to fly. <laughs> it ain't leaving the planet now. So it's got the three missing atmospheres. Those atmospheric engines that that didn't work. If they did work like I thought they were going to work, I would have prevented this crash in the first place. Of course, I blame the engines. It could have just very well been the fact that uh, I'm really bad at landing. Even though I, I used to be pretty good. Now you know there's a large chunk of the ship missing. Huge chunk of the missing. It's like the whole back end of the ship is missing. And it looks like it kind of sank down in the ice a little bit. It's settled in. So let's go inside and check out how it is on the inside. There's a few things I need to get out of this thing while I'm... It's going to be a little weird walking because... Whoa. Well. Looks like the whole back end is... Uh... Looks like I, can... I don't even need to go through the door. Apparently I can just go in through the back end. <coughs> so... That's new. There's my damage report. You can see that pretty much a large section of my ship is no longer quote unquote operational. <laughs> the green tells you that okay that much of my ship is operational but you know a good third of my ship is no longer operational. Here it is. It says hull integrity. 65%. Oh you don't say. Now that always kind of confused me at first when I put these systems in, right? Because you, you, you think that, okay, in most, in most games, right, you go from 100 to 0 if it's a percentage, right? So you go from 100, and then when you hit 0, you blow up. But before you hit 0, even if you have 1%, your ship is good to go. Fully functional, nothing's broke. Maybe the decals have changed to where it's like, oh, look at all the damage on the decals, but everything works fine. You know, if you want to need to fire your gun, your gun fires. And if you need to do this, oh, I don't have any 0% of my weapons. Anyways, in, in Space Engineers, they take a more realistic approach. What they're saying is, is 35% of my ship is gone. And as you can see, 35% of my ship is gone. Even though I look at the, uh, the, the damage panel, you could also physically see when I come back here that 35% of my ship is functional. So even though, even though my uh, ship says, well, you have a hull integrity of 65%, it doesn't mean that I got 65% left to go before my ship blows up. Because clearly, after 35% damage to my ship, that's a full third of my ship broken. This ship is no longer a spaceship. It's just a piece of junk sitting in the lake. It's a hunk of iron, and it ain't going nowhere. So, when reading this meter, one's got to think, right, that... 
if 65% you know of your ship it means that it's pretty much inoperable then like when you're having a hole integrity of about 90 to 85 percent your ship's about about ready to 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 not to cease functioning because 10 15 percent of your ship is gone you know as you know the 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 ship really can't operate so really you can only take about five to ten percent damage before your your ship comes under serious damage now that's always military doctrine as well you take five percent ten percent damage to your unit and your army's about ready to fall apart that's all there is to it because there's a lot of integral systems more than just you know oh I'm gonna fight to every last man no you got logistics you got you got all of these things right medical civilians the whole the whole business you even your cooks Right? And same with the ship. It's just filled with systems, systems, systems. So if any of these numbers hit around 85%, your ship's, your ship's pretty much toast. So you have to really watch your percentages really bad, really closely. Because the way Space Engineer sees it is that 100% is your whole ship. And it's kind of like a car. You know, really, how much of your car or your tank or your airplane can you really lose? You mean, you lose, what, 10% of your wing in a jet plane that jet plane probably isn't going to fly anymore or you lose 35 percent of your car in a wreck your car is no longer going to be a car it's a piece of junk it's total so i'm just saying to you right now that if i had insurance which i really does i really really don't this would be considered a total loss even though, you know, some of the things still function. So what I need to do is I need to take out these stereos. Because I need my stereo. Now in the last update, the, uh, the uh, collision boxes were a, little, were a little off. But I think they've been working on that. So you could have a hard time, you know, trying to weld a light or a sound block or some small block. Okay, there was a big lag. Somehow I lagged clean out of the ship. Now one of the things that I need to find here is uh, where's the reactor? A lot of people build these ships like like they'll build ships where they're just filled with conveyor boxes. And I think that's really rather inefficient. A lot of people seem to like it. As you can see, they have a string of conveyor box. Like the last ship, the Predator, you know, they, all those conveyor boxes. A lot of people do that. I think it's inefficient. You should use the tubes because the tubes, less triangles, you know, less polygons, less of everything, so it prevents lag. And they're just as tough as a conveyor box, so... What I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to find the uh, the reactor so I can get the get the uranium out. But you know, since I really didn't build this ship, I just found this ship. I have no idea where the reactor is. So maybe I should just transfer this and just start digging for that reactor because it's got to be around here somewhere. And I left a big crater in the in the in the lake. I wonder if I should put my tunes where I should put my tunes. Here, let's let's get up in here. Get this stuff all transferred over. So we're going to see a lot of this. This is the meat and potatoes of uh, space engineers, as you know. A lot of engineering. So, you know, I'm a kind of guy who, you know, think of, think of battle as just that. It's a moment of intense 
you know, it's intense. However, it's short, and you're either going to live or you're going to die. So, I've been watching a lot of uh, space engineer films just to see, you know, how space and how, how how these other guys do it and just get ideas because you know I'm I'm quite amateur I get it you know I'm not the the best in the world I got an imagination so that, that's where I start but I'm not the best I don't do editing very well a lot of my episodes especially there in the beginning this is only my like eighth or ninth episode I've ever done on YouTube so I'm getting better, and I'm thinking that the last episode, number seven, came out wonderfully. Certainly, it's conveying the story, clearly, I think. And I'm very happy with how things are going. Now, you know, the guy who is uh, out here, our space engineers, he still has to try to make it to... He still has to do his Mars mission. He has to get over to Mars, but, you know, first, like before on the moon, he has to get up in space. Now, one of the things that I am in implementing is, is that, you know, one of the things about space engineers is that Jetpack is extremely OP. It really is. You can fly to space... from the ground. You don't even need to be a little bit tougher than that. You know, a guy shouldn't just say, hey, guess what? I got a jetpack strapped on my back and I'm going to fly to space. No problem. So, that's pretty tough. Even even though... So, there's this mod that's that, that really kind of nerfs the jetpack quite a bit. And I'm going to implement it on my server here pretty quick because... I really want the jetpack to be just that, a jetpack, not really like, okay, I can just go wherever I want with my jetpack and make my, making my spaceships kind of secondary. Of course, I have times 10 inventory, so that allows me to hold a lot of, a lot of uh, cargo. But I can still keep it on realistic cargo settings for when I'm doing, like, rigs and vehicles. So I'm not, like, holding one million, you know, volume units of cargo stuff or, or, or you know, hauling a bunch of cargo that weighs vastly more than my actual vehicle that's uh, hauling the cargo. I'm really proud of my little trailer that I put out there. That's something that I designed myself for this truck and it's really easy all you have to do is undo the merge block and you can have like a little lifter type of thing and you can just lift that right up right off if you need to perfect for for salvage operations now I'm hoping I don't have to make five six trips but I'm thinking I do just to get these these tubes Oh man, check it out. I'm just gonna... Can I move this to a different cargo area? I can move this to the cryo chamber. I can move this here. Then that way I can... Dig this here out. See if I can't find that reactor and that uranium. So what do we got? We got more cargo space. We have more conveyors. What's this here? Let's get let's take this out. Ooh! I almost killed myself. I forgot that things have weight on on planets. And uh, fortunately our brave space engineer was having a uh, has a uh, helmet on. Otherwise, that would have hit him on the head. <laughs> that would have been... That would have been horrible. If that hit him on the head. 
checking my helmet for my weight. What is he gonna do? There's my planet thing there. There's where the enemies are. And there's my truck. See, it just says truck. It's a nice truck. I wonder if there's a conveyor over here. Conveyors. So yeah, I'm just trying to search for that that reactor because I could use that uranium. Because quite frankly, my base is running out of uranium. I don't think that my my uh, that there's uranium back there, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to cut down some of this stuff in here. See if I can't find that uranium. Maybe I'll hook up some tunes. Cause you know when you got a man at work. Every construction job I've ever done, there's always been tunes. And a lot of times, you know, lately at my work, there's been like, you know, those old 80s tunes, those old rock tunes like Scorpions and stuff, which is really cool. What have I got for... I'm sure I'm full up right now. So, you know, maybe there would be custom country western tunes. Now, of course, here in Space Engineers, we don't have uh, country tunes or whatever. But we do have tunes. So, here, let me just let me just make a make a speaker somewhere. Where 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 should I put a speaker? I could put one right here in the middle. That would be kind of cool. This is a good spot. Let's do that. Okay, let's see if we can't find the sound block. Now, unfortunately, the sound block only plays one song at a time. That's too bad. Here, I'm going to make my sound block red. Yeah, there we go. Let's put it right here. It's a good spot. Now we just need to weld it up. I'm using a second tier welders and grinders for now. Because I, I don't have any platinum, really, to spare. It takes platinums to make those elite weapons and stuff. So let's see what we can get in our sound block. For tune sound block okay let's turn the range up oh hear the uh, the cantina song from you know what actually I'll just say it I don't care if it's copyright cantina song from Star Wars now now that I said it maybe they say oh there's copyright we'll find out Still a cool tune, I don't care. Great work tune, too. <laughs> who, who invented this tune? Anyways, was this John Williams? Does anybody know who made this tune? John Williams? Because did he do all the music for Star Wars? If you did, it's still it's such a cool tune. Oh come on. Medical bays always take a lot. This is what thirty-five percent of your ship being broke looks like. <laughs> <laughs>
I never realized the song was so involved. Okay, I was a little quiet there for a bit. Oh, you know what? Remember I was telling you about how things don't fall through the floor anymore? This is evidence of that. It used to be that in the past, you can see how they're kind of jerking a little bit. Boy, those things would have went right through the grid. Oh, it looks like my program's still working because it's telling me the damage that's happening to my ship as I'm disassembling it. So, that's kind of cool. That's really cool. Such a nice day here in Solaris. Now, one of the things I really love to see, which probably, you know, it's not necessary, it, and, and I wouldn't blame anybody if it never happened. It's, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, blame me but you know like if we had weather effects wouldn't that be so cool like we had rainstorms and there was also you know dust storms like on Mars these sort of things I mean they have meteors meteors are cool but on a multiplayer server man you fill your you fill your server full of holes real quick because a meteor shower appears on every place that there's a grid owned by a player and uh, that means that uh, a lot of meteors producing a lot of holes and your megabytes just kinda start to add up now some people say that you know when that gets the when that number gets too big, oh, then um, you can't. It thinks it causes problems. Now I I don't I don't know about that, but I do know that it will take up a lot of your a lot of memories if after a while if you just keep mem using meteors. But meteors are good once in a while, and that is a storm. But I'm not talking about celestial. issues, you know, or, or, or weather effects. I'm talking more like rain. Now, here's the thing. Now, I was watching a, uh, a video on YouTube and it said 10 things that are almost nearly impossible to do on a video game that would be totally easy in real life. And uh, one of those things was picking up a small object off the floor which in real life would really be totally easy but in a video game is almost nearly impossible <laughs> as that was a prime example <laughs> Where is this? Uh, I'm gonna take down that oxygen tank next. We gotta, we gotta find, we gotta find that uh, that reactor because I need that that uranium because you know I only got like 300 and some ingots left in my in in that and if and and I don't want to have to go on some sort of mining trip when I had 400 ingots. Ooh, that one's already full. We're gonna have to go to a different cargo container. See, this is what happens when things are written in Russian. I'm not quite sure what's what. And only what I've converted over to not Russian can I really understand. Now, I, I'm getting better, you know. 
starting to identify what words mean what. And that just comes with experience, but you know, I'm American. So it takes me a while. Wait a second. Something has showed up on the radar. Let me turn on my helmet so I can see. Yep. What does it say? Clang. Planetary outpost. So it looks like Clang has done exactly what I'm doing. Whereas I was trying to disassemble my ship, at the same time, he's assembling some sort of forward base. So, clearly, an attack is imminent, as he's only 13 miles away, and I think a battle's to begin. Well, here's the thing. He isn't, he isn't coming yet. I don't see no ships over the horizon yet. But I certainly will need to prepare for battle. Which means, I need to find that uranium. I got lots of bullets, though. Maybe I'll take some uranium out of my truck. But I don't know where the uranium is. Maybe I can pull it out of my, my ship from one of these cargo bays. And then just head on home. I don't know. Hopefully I don't get attacked when I'm right here. But, you know, he is 13 miles away. Oh, come on. Okay, so he designed this ship. Let's see if I can't just pull that uranium through. No, I can't. But where can I, where can I put it? It's okay. Well, there's this connector 14. So there's a connector. I think that's on the other side. Well, let's see if we can't find connector 14. But it looks like my connectors are just kind of broken. I don't see connectors anywhere. Unless they're down in here somewhere. Let's see. Let's get up under here and see if we can't dig something. Let's dig something out. Well, that's kind of disconcerting. Clang has showed up over the horizon. Which means that battle is imminent. I'm sure that Clang will be sending his robots here pretty quick. And the next thing you know, we'll be fighting over territory. War over territory. That used to be a a song. It still is a song. It's a song by uh, Sepultura. War over territory. Such a great song because it's so such a fact too. All wars are over territory, except for in modern war, over territory anymore. It's really over culture. Everybody's fighting now over who's right and who's wrong and this and that and the other thing when why, why can't we just go back to the good old days when we just kind of fought over like whose land it was because now things are just getting really brutal and when war does break out and it will it's just going to be like I'm going to kill your entire culture it's going to be wars of genocide you know because people will not want to understand each other anymore you know I mean before it's like you go to war and you know you get a chunk of land from the other guy you're like man that's great I took your land and the other guy's like oh yeah I concede you took my land so whoever lives on that land you no longer belong to that land you belong to the other guys land okay that's fine rather fair but in the modern war nowadays, it's all about, not about land anymore, it's about the entire globe and whether your culture is going to dominate over the other guy's culture. So the only, re well, only thing that's going to survive is, is like, there can only be one culture, 
you know, kind of thing. And so you just got to, any war that happens nowadays is going to be about, you know, any war that's happening nowadays, you know, terrorism and all of that stuff, it's all about culture. It's like, we're going to destroy your entire civilization. And you can even see it in the politics and stuff. It's like, you know, you get one way and the other way and everybody's like, oh, everything is so apocalyptic. We want to come in for your entire way of thinking. And it's terrible. Oh, well, enough with my politics. I'm playing space engineers. And... We got the threat. So, you know what? I, I, I can't find the uranium. My wreck. Don't know when there is an attack. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to end the episode right here as part A. As we now see clearly that right there is a uh, clang and what I'm gonna do between the episodes is is if I don't get attacked by by clang's planetary outpost which he's obviously erected to attack the Solaris planetary center so this lake is gonna be the site of a battlefield and the space engineer knows it all the more reason to remove this so I'm gonna spend time working on this and hopefully on the next episode if I don't get attacked before then uh, we will start making preparations for battle. So, I will end today's episode. Uh, and hopefully, we will see you on Clang vs. the Space Engineers, Episode 8, Part B, where I really feel the battle will begin who's... This is really come set up like chess, you know. I mean, I got my king, and he's got his king, and we got this battlefield. And who's going to get the checkmate? Well, we shall see. In the meantime, I hope everybody has a good life. And I will see you next time on Clang vs. the Space Engineers. Thank you very much.